What's going on guys, Tosker here, and in this video we're going to create a dialogue service in WPF. Now I wanted to make sure I was showing you guys a, a pretty good practice, so I did look around on the internet for a little bit, and so I want to give credit where credit is due, and in the description below, uh, this tutorial was slightly influenced by another article, um, though I've written dialogues in a similar way. So if you want to follow along, uh, to start off, here's what our Solution Explorer looks like. Uh, we just have a dialogues folder, uh, an alert, service, and yes, no folder. We then have our utilities folder, which of course holds a relay command, uh, which we've also done a video on. And then we have a view models folder here. Now as far as the main window goes, down here I just have a window startup location for the center screen, uh, a height of 450, a width of 800, and then as you see here a little stack panel with buttons. Now to get started we're going to go over here to our view models and we're going to add a new class and we're going to call this the main window view model and then click add. Now the first thing we're going to do is create this as a public class. We're then going to add in a couple commands so I command call this the yes no command Next, I'm going to set up our constructor here, and we're just going to get our yes no command here, set it up to a new relay command, and we'll just call this method yes no. Now, of course, we're going to add in these methods here, so generate the methods. And for now, we're just going to keep them not implemented and throw an exception. And then of course come back over here to our main window, go down to our XAML and set up the binding. And then also of course add in the XML namespace. We'll add our view models in here so then we can then go down to our window, data context, and then set our data context to the view model. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some interfaces here. They're not 100% necessary, but I do want to use them in case later you want to use something like ninject or uh, any kind of dependency injection method. This might make it a little easier. So we're going to go over to service, right click, add a new item. And then here we're going to find interface, I'm going to call this I dialog service, add that in, and then create a public interface of course, and we're going to put in a little method signature here. We're going to do type T, because we're going to create a generic here, and then we're going to do open dialog T, and we're later going to create this, but for now we're just going to do dialog uh, view model base and we'll just call this view model. Now we want a base because we're going to extend and create more uh, different dialog view models for different types of dialogs. So we want to be able to pass it at least a base which all these uh, new view models will inherit from. So let's go over here to our service again and we're going to add in a new class and we'll just of course call this dialog view model base and then click add and since this is just going to be a base class we want it to be a public abstract class and then we are also going to give this an interface so for now we're just gonna back up go over to our dialog service again and since they're in the same folder we already have the reference added so then we're gonna create one more interface here and we're going to add a new item. We're going to find interface and then this is going to be the I dialog window. So this is going to be an interface that we're going to give to uh, new windows that we create that will be for uh, dialog purposes. Then click add. And then over here in our class we're of course again going to make this public. So we're going to create a nullable bool here and we're going to call this dialog result. 
and get set. So this uh, property already exists within a window. Then going to do an object and do data context, which we all know already, of course, exists within the window. And then another nullable bool, but in this case, it'll be a method. So it'll uh, return and we'll call it show dialog, which of course, again, also exists in the window. So now going back over to our dialog view model base, there's one thing uh, different that we're gonna wanna do here. Now, we're going to likely use dialog boxes for many reasons, and there's gonna be a lot of circumstances where we wanna return something uh, very specific or different. Sometimes not always just a true or false value. So in this case, for our view model base, we're just going to always give it a type T. So whenever we create a view model later, you'll see exactly what this is being used for and why. Moving on, what we also want to do is create a public string here called title. And we will get and set this because it'll be a property that we want to be able to bind to. Next, we're going to do a public string and we're going to call this message. Now, basically what this is going to be used for is if we ever want to pass a certain message on to the dialog box to be then displayed to the user. And then lastly, a public uh, type here, which is of course the type we're gonna define, and this will be the dialog result. And this is going to be whatever we're going to return to whoever is calling our dialog and perhaps want something back from it. Again, this will make more sense once we start creating our own dialogs. Now we are also going to wanna pass some of these on as we instantiate the uh, view model. So here we're gonna create three different constructors and I'll speed through the video and explain them after. So here's our dialog constructors. Uh, basically, we want to be able to send it an empty title and an empty message. So if we don't always want to do a message, uh, sometimes we may just want to give it a title and not a message. And then we can use both if we, of course, want to give it both title and message. And then lastly, we want to create a public void here. And this is going to be for when we want to close the dialog with a result. So close dialog with result. And then of course here we're just going to pass it AI dialog window. We'll call this dialog. And then we also want to close it with T result. So this is going to be what we're going to pass. Open this up. And we want the dialog result that we created at the class level to equal the result that we're closing with. And then we're going to check if the window is null. So uh, dialog does not equal null. Then we are going to say dialog, dialog result equals true. Now this isn't the dialog result that we created up here. This is actually the dialog result, as you see here, for the I dialog window. Now at this point, uh, we're going to see over here our iDialog service is going to have an issue. And if we go back, that's because now the dialog view model base requires a type. So we'll simply just add that in here. Now the next thing we want to do is over here in the service, we want to provide a dialog window to be used. So we're going to create a new window. And we're going to find WPF window. And then here we're just going to name it dialog window. So next we're going to go down here to our XAML. And we're not going to do much with this window. I don't want it really big, so we're just going to give it a height and width here of 300. And there is one thing that we can do, and we can set up the binding here to the title property in our uh, interface. And then down here for the content. Uh, we're not going to have a grid, we're going to do a content control. We'll give it an appropriate name here of content presenter. And then of course set the binding up. And it'll just bind to the data context that we have. And because this is going to be popping up on the user, we want to set the window startup location here to the center screen. Now that the basic view is set up, we want to go to the code behind here of our dialog window. And then all we want to do here is 
inherit from the iDialog window, so we're going to put in that interface. Now again, you're going to notice that we don't really need to actually implement this interface as we're not being, being given any errors. And that's because, as I said before, the properties that we created um, already exist within the window here. So if we go right click the window and we go to uh, go to definition and then here in the window uh, we see that we already have some of the basic things so we already have the title that's in our interface we already have the dialogue result here uh, as we scroll down even more we see we have the show dialogue method and then back up here uh, we see we don't see data context here and that would be in the content control here but I'll save you the time of going in there. All right, so now that we have everything set up, uh, the only thing we have left to do here is really set up a service and then implement it in our main window view model. So going back over here to service, going to add a new class, and this will be called dialog service, and add. And then here in our class, we'll of course make it public, We'll inherit uh, from the i dialog service interface uh, control period and implement and then within here is where we're actually going to set everything up so we're going to set up the i dialog window here we're going to call it window and this will equal a new dialog window that we've created we then want to set the data context here equal to the view model that we passed and then we want to call the show dialog and then lastly we want to return the view model dot dialog result 